Clock uncertainty, clock skew. Clock uncertainty in digital circuits refers to the variability in the arrival time of clock signals at different points in a circuit or at the same point over different clock cycles. Understanding and managing clock uncertainty is essential for ensuring reliable operation and meeting performance goals in digital systems. So let's explore the clock uncertainty. Clock uncertainty arises due to a combination of factors including clock skew and clock jitter. In this video, we will dive into the clock skew. Clock skew is the difference in the arrival time of a clock signal at different flip-flops or registers within a digital circuit. As shown, the clock signal at flip-flop 1 arrives at different time of the clock signal at flip-flop 2. This difference in the arrival time of the two clock signals is the clock skew. So, the equation of clock skew will be T skew equals capture clock delay minus launch clock delay. Now let's see the types of clock skew. Based on the clock distribution network, clock skew can be categorized into two types, global skew and local skew. Global skew. Global skew is the maximum difference in clock arrival times across all flip-flops in the system, regardless of whether the flip-flops share a common data path. Therefore, global skew is the difference between the longest and shortest clock paths in the design, as illustrated in this figure. Local skew. Local skew refers to the difference in clock arrival times between two directly connected flip-flops in a circuit. These flip-flops typically share a common data path, and the local skew directly affects the timing of this path. For example, flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 3 are in the same data path. Therefore, the difference in clock arrival times between them is a local skew. Now let's see another classification of clock skew. Based on timing direction, clock skew can be categorized into two types, positive skew and negative skew. Positive skew. Positive skew occurs when the clock signal arrives later at the receiving flip-flop than at the sending flip-flop, meaning the capture clock arrives after the launch clock causing a delay at the destination relative to the source. For example, in this case, the capture clock arrives after the launch clock, introducing a delay at the destination compared to the source. So according to the skew equation, and as capture clock delay greater than launch clock delay, then T skew will be greater than zero, results in a positive skew. Now let's see negative skew. Negative clock skew occurs when the clock signal arrives earlier at the receiving flip-flop than at the transmitting flip-flop, meaning the capture clock arrives before the launch clock. For example, in this case, the capture clock arrives before the launch clock, introducing a delay at the source compared to the destination. So according to the skew equation, and as capture clock delay is smaller than launch clock delay, then T skew will be smaller than zero results in a negative skew. The question here, what are the reasons of this difference in the arrival time at various flops? So let's see the reasons of clock skew. First, the interconnect length. Variations in the length of wires carrying the clock signal can result in different propagation delays. Longer interconnects introduce more delay, causing the clock signal to arrive later at some components compared to others. As shown in the figure, the difference in interconnect length between clock 1 and clock 2 will lead to difference in arrival time of the clock signals at their flip-flops. Another reason is the logic gate's delay asymmetry. Even with equal wiring lengths, the clock signal can experience delays due to logic gates in the clock path. The asymmetry in the delays of these gates causes variations in the clock signal's arrival time at flip-flops, resulting in clock skew. As shown in figure, even if the wiring length is identical, the variation of delays due to logic gates in the clock path will lead to variations in arrival times of clock at flip-flops. Also from the reasons of clock skew is the coupling capacitance, where coupling capacitance between adjacent conductors can introduce noise and unwanted voltage variations. When this occurs between two clock signal lines, it can result in timing inconsistencies.
Another reason is differences in input capacitance. As clock skew can result from variations in the input capacitance at the pins of devices receiving the clock signal, such as flip-flops, registers, and other sequential logic elements. Higher input capacitance can cause the clock signal to be delayed as it takes longer to charge and discharge the capacitance. Now, let's see the PVT variations effect on signal propagation speed and therefore affect the clock skew. First, process variations. During the fabrication process, variations in parameters such as transistor dimensions, wires dimensions, doping levels, and oxide thickness can occur. These process variations lead to variations in signal propagation delay. Second, voltage variations. Changes in supply voltage due to power supply noise and voltage drops in the power distribution network affect the signal propagation speed through transistors and interconnects. Third, temperature variations. Variations in temperature across the chip can affect the speed of signal propagation. Higher temperatures can increase the resistance and capacitance of the interconnects, leading to longer delays. Finally, let's see the strategies to reduce clock skew. To minimize clock skew, here are some important considerations that we, as designers, should keep in mind. Design a balanced clock distribution network using clock tree synthesis to ensure equal path lengths and delays. Place buffers strategically and use symmetric buffers in the clock distribution network to equalize the delay across different paths. Add sufficient timing margins during analysis to account for uncertainty. Route the clock signal symmetrically to ensure that the clock signal travels equal distances to all components. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay tuned for upcoming videos where we'll explore more topics related to IC design.